Hi, so this is a cooking guide to show you how you can make uh, foods and stuff for uh, PvP players or PvE players, nonetheless, to make you silver in Albion Online. So, essentially, I've been cooking in Albion for over half a year right now, like uh, cooking intensively on a mammoth, making billions and billions of silver every single month from cooking. And I cooked on East and I also cooked a bit on Europe, just mostly on East server. And I'll show you exactly what I learned so far about the cooking and how you can make silver on your way of cooking, right? So I want to establish there's two major ways to cook in Albion Online. There's the non-focus route and there's focus route. Now, what is focus? Focus is points that you get for having premium in game. When you have premium, you will get 10,000 focus every single day. Focus will give you higher return on your item, essentially making you more money per craft and some items are so valuable in the game which they require focus to make profit off of if you do not use focus you will not be able to craft that item profitably right or that food profitably so essentially the idea is you pay for premium with silver you get so much silver off that focus where you're able to buy premium again with that silver plus make extra silver on top of it which that is your profit monthly right that is what alt meta is and that's why it's so popular in albin online it's because it's broken it's broken when you get high spec. It's all based on spec. So where you want to get high spec in food and then you do that. So now I'll show you exactly what are the right items to craft in which cities and what are good food items to craft. So some items are generally only at a certain city. This is based off of plots requiring food, a certain type of food to feed it so they can be used. Hence, why is there's a tax on them for you to use, right? The the owner has its fees because he has to buy food to feed those plots. And the foods are for the tanner, which is the bonus in Martlock for leather, is chicken pies. For the stone mason, which makes the stone blocks, it's bean salads. It's at bridge watch. Uh, for the weaver, which is in Limhurst, uh, it, that makes cloth, it's the chicken omelets. In Fort Sterling, the woodcutter, which makes the planks, the favorite food is carrot soups. And finally in Tedford, uh, which makes the metal bars, its favorite food is wheat soups. Now for the crafting station, uh, first up the warrior's forge, its favorite food is the mutton stew, then you have the hunter's lodge, which is potato salads, then the mage tower with mutton sandwich, and then finally the tool maker with turnip salads. Now for the four final stations, we have the Alchemist Labs, which is best in Brazilian and requires pork omelets. You also have the Cook, which can be anywhere, which requires goose pie. Uh, there's also the Butcher, which requires cabbage soups, and then the Saddler, which requires goat stew. For the PvP items, um, I made a quick tier list to help you out, but essentially uh, you have the quantity, which I have listed here. Then you have all the image of the items that are actually kind of worth to do, right? All the other ones that I haven't listed aren't like um, really well player bought items, meaning they should just kind of be ignored. Uh, I also have a little profitability logo. So red being the worst and green being the best. Uh, the If you can craft enchanted. So for example, um, Krakens, you can sell 0.1s, 0.2s, 0.3 on the market. But for potato salads, you can't sell those enchanted tiers. You just can't. It's very hard to do, though. Um, and then focus required, which means um, if you absolutely need focus to make the items, meaning if it's yellow, it means sometimes it will require focus and sometimes it won't. But there's obviously some exceptions, right? Like, um, for example, uh, profitability on the beef stews. Well, they might not be profitable to just mass craft, but once you get into using focus on it, like focus on point ones and point twos, because you don't really use focus crafting beef stews. You use it if you do make point ones and point twos, though. If you make enchanted food, that's a different story. Then it can be very profitable. But that's essentially all the foods you need to look at to how to craft it and stuff. But I'll show you how to do it now. Now for the crafting part, where we actually... Put the knowledge to the test, right? So first up, first steps, right? It's going to be five steps. But the first one, um, you want to look for an item of craft, right? I already 
told you a bunch of good items city wise global items pvp wise just there's not you don't want to overthink it just start looking at the numbers look at demand find an item that kind of fits your criteria off of uh, what i showed in the tier like in the kind of tier list of what i just showed and then pick one for here as an example i'll pick the omelet the fish omelet or the crab omelet it's called the second step of the process is actually checking the profit of the item, making sure it's profitable to craft, right? Because we don't want to cook it and then sell it at a loss. We kind of want to sell it at a profit. So that's when the math part comes in. And I'll show you how you can calculate it manually. And I'll also show you how you can do it with my resources, right? I make spreadsheets for those that don't know. And that you can actually get for free or paid, either one. Um, you can earn free just by watching on my Twitch that I'll have linked in the description. And when you get 50,000 channel points, which will take you like a week of having your computer on the stream. It's a 24 seven stream. I stream about 10, 12 hours a day. Should be no problem. And there's also my Patreon if you just want to skip it, right? It's, it's, it's both options. It, I spent a lot of hours on it. And I'll also show you how to manually calculate. So don't worry about that. But as you can see on the, the screen right now you can see the sheet right of me looking at the profit and me finding sure it's profitable and it is indeed a good profit margin right and it does sell we just checked it so that's why it kind of um, makes us know that we can craft this item profitably and then we can proceed with step three then to calculate it manually you just want to get the recipe so a one crab six corn six mullen and then six raw pig and then you just multiply by the price you get on the market for. That's going to give you your total cost for that one item without return rate, without fees, without tax, without nothing, right? And then you want to put these items together. You want to get the sum of it. And then you want to add the fee to craft. Then it's going to give you your total craft cost. And then you multiply that total craft cost by the return rate. And that's going to give you your total cost. And the only thing you're missing after that is the tax, market tax. And obviously, if you're calculating an item that makes a batch of 10 or a batch of 5, you want to divide it at the end by that number. The third step is simple. It's just buying the materials. So if you're using my calculator, then it already tells you automatically how many materials you need and it calculates with return rate. So you just buy what it tells you to buy. And if you are not using the calculator, then what you want to do is you just want to keep it proportionate to the recipe, right? So you would have it, so you'd have six times more corn than you'd have of crabs. And then the corn, the mullein, and the raw meat would all be equal, right? Because it's all six. The fourth step is actually crafting the item, the, the fun part, right? Which is where you'll go to the cook in the city or wherever you're crafting at. And you actually cook the item. It's not that complicated. You just want to click the item. That's where you can see the fee and the return rate to put in your calculation. So you check beforehand. And else than that, you just craft. So the fifth step is actually listing the item, right? That's where you look at the item price, look at the history. And I see that it's selling for 4,000 or 40,500, but it's a bit too high. And I want to go drop the price to 36,000, which I'm still making a good 70, 80% profit on it. And I'm comfortable with that. And I know it can sell overnight by having it to that. And so I just create it. And that's pretty much it for the cooking guide. I hope you learned a bunch of stuff. And if you did, please make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, it does help me much more than you would think with the YouTube algorithm. But yeah, have a good day, everyone.